Bonjour tout le monde, euh, allô tout le monde, euh, euh, bienvenue de retour, euh, bon retour au, à la plénière. Mon nom c'est Yvon Touko et je suis euh, vos maître de cérémonie euh, pour euh, Together Ensemble. Euh, et oui, euh, you've just been part of a viewing party and possibly join uh, the coffee chats afterward or just stay in the session to just kind of like ask more questions and interact more with um, the panelists. Uh, but may, you may be wondering what happened in other session, and so that's what we're here for. We're here to basically do a quick overview of what happened, and I'm really, really excited to pass it on again to Jake Perkowitz and his amazing team of rapporteurs, which includes uh, Anika, Luca, uh, Mohamed, Namde, Victoria, and Tia. And yeah, they'll be reporting back and basically uh, just uh, doing a summary of what happened in the other session. And if you haven't uh if you haven't heard or if you haven't listened if you weren't here yesterday you didn't catch my uh introduction to uh to the team and jake uh please make sure uh you go to uh jake per jake berkowitz.com to find all of his work and right now i'm going to stop talking and pass it on over to jake who is going to do a great job uh filling you up with what happened in all the sessions thanks thanks so much Ivan, for t for uh for teeing it up and uh, I'm uh, bienvenue à, à toutes et à tous uh, uh, pour notre deuxième journée. And I'm sure that uh, everyone has already, I've uh, listened to a couple of sessions already. Wow, what a, what a fantastically interesting um, day. So um, I'm here in uh, Almont, just outside of Ottawa, an unceded territory of the Algonquin uh, nation. I'm working with a team of six fantastic rapporteurs, as uh, Yvonne uh, mentioned. And their job, if you weren't with us uh, yesterday, has been to be, uh, you know, they're, they're virtually embedded in uh, each session, listen carefully, caref listening carefully. And uh, their um, challenge is to condense the 45 minutes or more of each session into a concise three minute summary so we can all have a sense of the over overarching themes and conversations that are developing here. So let's get right to it with the first of our six uh, rapporteurs on the uh, how evidence-informed policy making can accelerate the SDGs and uh, je veux passer la parole à Victoria Tan. Merci beaucoup Jacob. Donc bon début d'après-midi à tous. Donc le premier panel est le rôle des données probantes dans les politiques publiques afin d'accélérer les ODD qui a réuni uh, Rémi Quirion, le scientifique en chef du Québec, Philippe Gachon, donc chercheur et directeur uh, à l'UQAM, et avec Mme Cécile Bull, Mélanie Bisby, John Davis et Cathy Vaillancourt. Un panel extrêmement intéressant et surtout d'actualité. Surtout pendant cette période de pandémie où on voit que la science occupe un grand rôle dans la place des médias et sur la place publique. Espérons que la science va rester euh, présente après la pandémie. Euh, un des sujets qui a été mentionné, c'est qu'avec la pandémie, les scientifiques sont amenés à agir dans l'urgence pour émettre des recommandations aux élus. Donc, John Neves a mentionné que maintenant, ce sont des délais de trois heures pour effectuer des recommandations à nos élus, donc euh, extrêmement dans l'urgence. Euh, le rôle des scientifiques est de conseiller les ministères à tirer des leçons, donc les bons coups, les mauvais coups, et d'apprendre aussi des réactions qui se sont faites après la pandémie. Deux défis se présentent. Le premier défi est le fait d'avoir des silos, des silos dans les ministères, mais aussi entre les ministères. Ce défi peut représenter quelque chose qui est extrêmement important et un défi considérable quand on parle de l'application des ODD. Par la suite, le deuxième défi est la méthode scientifique qui est peu connue par nos élus et c'est pourquoi les scientifiques doivent outiller et guider nos élus dans la prise de décision pour connaître un peu plus le processus scientifique. Euh, les scientifiques ne décident pas, mais ce sont les élus, donc c'est quelque chose qui est important à rappeler. Euh, concernant les objectifs de développement durable, c'est sûr qu'ils sont différents de, du contexte de la crise sanitaire. L'urgence climatique n'est pas aussi concrète et présente que euh, celle de, de la crise sanitaire où on doit notamment gérer les de taux, ce qui peut influencer nos décideurs. La solution qui est proposée par les chercheurs, c'est d'augmenter la capacité de, de conseils scientifiques aux élus et aux fonctionnaires. Un des concepts qui a été mentionné était d'avoir un bilinguisme scientifique. Donc, les scientifiques doivent connaître le langage des fonctionnaires et les fonctionnaires doivent connaître le langage des scientifiques. Les, les formations en conseil scientifique sont des programmes qui sont proposés aux décideurs. 
Finalement, comme dernier sujet qui a animé le, le panel, c'est euh, l'interrelation euh, des objectifs de développement durable, l'importance d'avoir des stratégies globales au Québec et au Canada, de revoir nos systèmes de manière plus globale et d'avoir des stratégies qui sont coordonnées, notamment au niveau municipal, donc euh, d'interpeller beaucoup plus les citoyens à jouer un rôle dans la transition énergétique, la relance verte de notre économie et certainement un panel qui est fort intéressant que je vous invite à consulter. Merci beaucoup. Hey, merci beaucoup, uh, Victoria. Um, and so for the, uh, well, right on to the, uh, to the next summary of the, um, of the panels. And again, you can watch all of these uh, summaries on uh, YouTube in a, in, a, in a couple of days. I know there's a lot of information that Victoria packed in. I watched that, uh, that session and that was a fantastic summary. Um, the next one is um, Leaving No One Behind, Addressing Inequality Across Sectors in Atlantic Canada. Canada. And I'd like to um, invite uh, Namdi Akabwezi to, uh, to give us a summary of that one. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Jake. Um, hi, everybody. Um, so I'm going to give uh, a summary about the talk um, on, about leaving no one behind in uh, Atlantic Canada. The main theme of the discussion focused around the need to represent uh, the group of persons who have been underrepresented, such as uh, persons with disabilities, indigenous people, youths, and uh, rural communities. Uh, the discussion was meant to highlight the great work being done to, uh, to close uh, the gap. So then the discussion noted that part of the reason why these groups of people were left behind is due to accessibility and reach. Uh, one of the speakers, uh, Rachel, noted that a lot of youths haven't thought about how they can connect with their communities. So the organization she works with um, organizes youth programs and annual conferences to build collaboration among these youths. They also provide funding for youths uh, and they form youth delegations who they send to different events, uh, even at the UN. They also teach youths about sustainable development because these youths are the future and a lot of them would have entered the workforce uh, by the year 2030 when the SDGs uh, 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 should have been achieved. For instance, youths that are 15, 16, 17 years now, in 10 years time, they are gonna be 25, 26, and they will all be working professionally. And so 65% of the youth who work with our organization are from underrepresented backgrounds. Uh, so the other speaker, Amy, also works with the Accessibility Directorate in the Department of Justice. Uh, and she noted that her department carries out work to improve access to those with accessibility challenges. Uh, Amy noted that Nova Scotia has the highest number of people with disabilities. So their goal is to recognize accessibility as a human right. That's why they're actually situated within the Department of Justice. Uh, and so their, their main focus, although they have a lot of focus, their main focus now is education. Uh, and they want to ensure that all education institutions in Atlantic Canada have an accessibility committee. So education was identified as a priority, and this includes public and private education, because they want to set a standard in place, uh, um, um, which is going to help them to achieve the SDGs by uh, 2030. That's the, the SDG that is focused towards education. So a lot of the members of this uh, accessibility committee are persons with disability uh, so that their voices can be heard directly on how um, to foster their needs. So the core of the recommendations for this committee are built around equitable access to education as a human right. So the last speaker, Ashley, also noted that they run a program that offers uh, regional level support for waste collection and uh, community-based compost sites uh, within underrepresented communities in Atlantic Canada. So they carry out education for waste management for all ages, including youths and the elderly. Uh, most of these communities who benefit from these programs are actually not part of the municipalities. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Namdi, and that was a really important, I think, I think point, you know, you mentioning around that uh, from, from the event around uh, the time frame of 10 years, 10 years can sometimes seem like a lot of time, um, but you mentioned about, uh, you know, uh, teenagers now who are going to be uh, working or 
you know, in, in, in 10 years. And as a parent, you certainly realize that 10 years can fly by very quickly. So in fact, it's, it's not that much uh, time. Let me pass it on to our uh, next rapporteur um, from the session on localizing the SDGs in your community. I'll pass the baton to Annika Zaumi. Hi, everyone. Um, so I had the pleasure of taking part in the session about localizing the SDGs in your community, which was led by Stephen Junkert from the International Institute for Sustainable Development. Um, this session was really focused on what it means for the SDGs to be practically implemented within communities um, and who are the key players that are responsible for this effective implementation. We started off with Brian Bowman, the mayor of the city of Winnipeg, who shared a little bit about how Winnipeg has grown over his term as mayor and how he has a very strong vision to build the city as a place that is strong, sustainable, and inclusive. And the SDGs play a really important role in this because they help the city understand where the priorities are that the city needs to focus on in order to achieve a long-term vision of being truly equitable and inclusive. Um, he shared uh, one of the uh, um, data collection tools that they use, which is um, open uh, to the public to track their uh, response through community service ambassadors to the um, social distancing measures around COVID-19. Um, and he underscored the importance of having data that is freely accessible by the general public, but that also allows the city to be scrutinized and looked at in terms of their engagement and um, ability to implement uh, measures effectively and transparently. Uh, all in all, he underlined the importance of the SDGs as to be used as a measurement tool in city planning and development. We moved on to Danielle Forger, who is, uh, S who is an SDG professional based out of the University of Laval in Quebec City. Um, while he highlighted that he can't speak to the um, way that Quebec City as a whole is implementing SDGs, he did share a tool that he's been working on that demonstrates how to understand the way that SDGs can be incorporated into city strategies. Um, the GBC ODD, which is not yet launched, is a tool that is used to um, understand why and how SDGs can be clear and actionable for decision making within the community. Um, and underscored uh, the, uh, the key components that will help a city uh, figure out whether a certain intervention uh, can be long-term, short-term, whether it's a priority, and highlighted three main factors, importance, performance, and competence that need to be taken into consideration when determining intervention strategies. And then we moved on to Anna Maria Cipriani, uh, a sustainable development coordinator in Waterloo, who underscored that the SDGs are a good fit, add value, guide needed pivots, and municipal innovation within cities and how the SDGs can be a really important role to align the city's priorities moving forward. SS Ahmed, founder of Green Beacon, also underscored the same point around the importance of the SDGs and how they add value and support the city's pivoting moving forward and underscored how the SDGs focus on gender equality is a really important um, piece here. And finally, we had Louis Patricio from the London Poverty Research Center, who shared that um, SDGs are a shared language that will allow multiple sectors, including, um, including uh, nonprofits, NGOs, uh, the city and municipality and government to be involved in implementing the SDGs. Thanks, thanks, Annika. That scared me probably as much as it scared you, the timer. And uh, thank you for that fantastic uh, summary. And so we'll move on to the, uh, the next one. Partnerships catalyze sustainable food production and banking, and banking seed for our future. Living Labs for Food and Seed and their impacts with Tia Brierley. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tia Brierley, and I'm from the University of Waterloo. Uh, for this talk, we were joined by panelists from the United Way, Fleming College, and Crayola. This talk focused on how partnerships can be utilized in the development of social innovation projects from different interdisciplinary fields. 
These three partners came together when the United Way acknowledged a serious problem. In the 90s, there was a mandate to eliminate child hunger in Canada, and this was not yet being met. The United Way wanted to find a unique ways to approach the problem holistically and solve the issue of child hunger in their communities. At this point, Crayola was able to step up to the table and form a partnership. Crayola had a significant amount of unused land in the Kawartha Lakes that they generously offered up to be used as a community garden to help solve the child hunger problem. With a plot of land and a problem to solve, Fleming College reached out to form another partnership with their environment postgrad program to help design the land and manage it in a sustainable way. Additionally, they were able to help provide knowledgeable students who uh, were able to drill for water um, to support the garden. At the time this garden was being developed, approximately 1,600 to 2,100 people were accessing the food bank per month with 40% of them being children. With numbers like this, there were several parties who felt the need to get involved in this project and really help their community. As the goals for the garden were being designed, the parties knew they wanted a way to help solve the hunger issue while still being able to treat the land sustainably. With this in mind, another project at Fleming College was also started for a seed bank. This project had several motivations, including needing the seed to enhance and restore the environment, genetic diversity, climate change adaptation plans, and sharing the seeds to help others in the community. With these two major projects now having hit the ground, there were many key lessons and takeaways that these panelists were able to share with us. Some of these highlights were, from Crayola, um, a key takeaway was the strength, that strengths come from partnerships and it's very important to be committed to your community. From Fleming, uh, their key takeaway was how powerful it is to gain partners. With Fleming offering student support and expertise in growing, they could only get so far. It was other partnerships that allowed them to actually deliver the food produce, uh, such as their supply chain partners. For the United Way, their key takeaway was that food security needs to be more than emergency response, and in order to achieve their goals, they will, likely they will continue to be a leader in the community on these issues. Overall, this talk displayed a wonderful project that formed to help solve a problem with various sets of skills. Thanks again. Hey, thanks Tia for introducing us to that, you know, giving us an overview of that really interesting local cl collaboration that integrated so many uh, sustainable development uh, goals. And um, our next uh, rapporteur will be talking about the pathways toward decent work and economic resilience. Let me pass the baton to Mo Mohamed Koya. Hi there. Uh, my name is Mohamed and I'm from the University of Waterloo. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to join the pathways toward decent work and economic resilience session, I'll be giving you some key highlights from that. Uh, just to reiterate, some of the speakers were uh, Shannon Rohan, the Chief Strategy Officer for SHARE, Raphael Chappé from the Brooklyn Institute for Social Research and, open, and an Open Society Foundations Fellow, and Taylor Sekon, for, uh, one of the directors at Social Capital Partners. So some of the keywords and phrases that were shared in this session were social distancing and also the influence of investment funds and pension funds. And so it started off discussing our current issues, uh, namely that our current state is bringing to light what were the already existing systemic issues in our society. Primarily, this is showing us that workers that are the most marginally employed and underpaid are those in the most unsafe positions. During our social distancing situation, it was asked of the panelists, what is the perspective on the importance of technology platforms that have provided essential services to society and the workforces that they rely on? And right now, uh, what we have seen is that the business models that succeed are ones that use network effects to connect to different users. And unfortunately, in the economics of the attention economy, you end up with large behemoths such as Uber, Airbnb, Instacart, uh, Corner Shop, Facebook and Google, amongst others, uh, including Amazon. And the owners of these platforms enjoy gigantic returns and are uniquely positioned to extract the data from uh, th their operations to um, provide even greater returns. And these platforms provide little to no employee benefits 
And this model essentially contributes to greater economic insecurity, a volatility in earnings for workers, and the and increasing probability of experiencing a sudden loss of income. Workers have not really been able to preserve wealth, and this was already happening uh, pre-COVID-19. Um, additionally, panelists were asked if after you know, after we have gone through decades of union power being undermined, is there a path for advancing decent work? And so uh, panelists started to discuss that social distancing and solidarity have a difference. And this is critical to think of when we move forward from the current crisis. Uh, giving up our civic freedoms to stay home and keep others safe is in fact an act of solidarity. And we are realizing that our own well-being depends on the well-being of others and those around us. Additionally, there is an increased visibility of workers like grocery workers and delivery workers and drivers. And from this, there also needs to be a dedication to capital stewardship. Um, all panelists agree that this is the largest economic downturn since the Great Depression. And, what, and they were asked what they have been working on within their own roles and organizations that they, can, um, that they think can provide hope for society as we rebuild from this economic collapse. Um, so one, this is definitely a crisis that is hitting the people that were least prepared to deal with it the hardest. And um, this is within the service sector, precarious work, small businesses that were already struggling to compete with bigger players in an online economy. Um, and so uh, one thing that was noted was that within private equity industries, some of our biggest funders are our pension funds. And we need to rethink how our capital is affecting the world. And there's a lot of room for pension funds to use that influence if we are actively thinking about it and working on it. Within this, fiduciary duty is critical. Rethinking the ideology of shareholder value maximization is critical. And getting access to the online economy today has, while it's never been easier for smaller businesses, we need to step up and provide support um, to provide access to these tools that are already out there. Um, and so across the board, all panelists uh, agreed that there's a strong need globally to rethink our investment structures and strategies in order to reduce the inequalities that are coming to light uh, in our current situation with the COVID-19 crisis. Thanks, Mohammed. Uh, you know, it's really interesting. I mean, uh, it made me think that, you know, that uh, it's so important, the socioeconomic aspects that uh, your uh, panel brought up in, in thinking about sustainable development goals when, when that when that term first uh, uh, you know originated things like the gig economy the attention economy weren't terms that uh, you know existed so that we have to we have to um, uh, continually re, you know integrate these elements into our thinking and and so far our sixth and uh, last rapporteur session on the SDGs in K to 12 education let me introduce uh, Lucas Moffat Lucas over to you Hi everyone, so my name is Lucas Moffitt from the University of Waterloo and uh, I, I had the pleasure of attending the session for SDGs and how that can be incorporated into K-12 education. And so what was discussed really is what we've seen is the profound impact of COVID-19 on public education, not just locally but around the globe. And despite this interruption, really placing an emphasis on the fact that we can't lose sight of incorporating the SDGs. Uh, currently, we are not on track to meet the 2030 goals, and really education is being looked at as one of the crucial uh, catalyzers to meet these goals. Uh, there's various ways that education has been modified to include additional info while still not increasing the net content that teachers have to teach. So essentially figuring out how to incorporate SDG information into the curriculum that's already being taught. Um, one example was from Juliet Waters, who is affiliated with an organization called Kids Code Jeunesse, and basically about six years ago, they began implementing coding um, into the classroom, and it was initially met with resistance, but it's gained greater acceptance, and now people are starting to see the value of technology and coding, and it's gained broad acceptance, and now what they're moving forward is to actually implementing AI, so artificial intelligence, into the classroom, which is similar to what happened six years ago. It's being met with some resistance, but slowly moving forward and being more accepted, which is a positive indicator. Another thing is the emphasis on the need for schools to educate students on global issues and empower them to be global citizens or literate in the skills of global citizens. 
but in order to do this first, there's actually education needed. So we need to teach the teachers how they can teach the students to become global citizens. Additionally, um, we talked about different ways we could foster collaboration between the various parties, um, in particular indigenous and non-indigenous uh, communities, whether it's through cultural events, sporting events um, within the classroom. Um, and one of the things emphasized is the fact that there are a lot of traditional or old teachings from indigenous communities and really focusing on you know, the positive ways we can incorporate those teachings into modern curriculum because there's a lot of value in those teachings that's not always passed through. Uh, lastly, I'd like to talk about, I guess, on the end note, which was that the future does in fact look bright for teachers, um, although there's a lot of variability and we're all learning a lot through this time. Uh, the way this world is experiencing the COVID-19 crisis, it's bringing us together in new ways and through technology we're collaborating in ways that we never have before and so as a result of this we'll pull out of this crisis stronger and in a more globalized world and also the links will be shared with organizers uh, for those events and that's all so thank you thanks so much lucas it's just fascinating to think that you know that some of the uh, solutions and issues we're thinking about now in terms of sustainable get development goals integrates AI and traditional indigenous knowledge at the, at the same time, speaks to the complexity of the issues. And uh, so that was it. That was all six of the uh, rapporteurs. And Yvonne, if you're uh, out there, I'll pass the baton over to you to, uh, to close things up before we, for everybody that, for the 30 minute break before um, the next sessions begin. Awesome. Uh, merci beaucoup uh, à l'équipe de, uh, de Jake, uh, uh, Annika, Mohamed, uh, Luca, Tia, uh, qui donc j'ai oublié, uh, Victoria. Et oui, merci beaucoup à l'équipe. C'est vraiment un travail. Uh, je suis vraiment reconnaissant du, du travail que son équipe fait. C'est vraiment intéressant de pouvoir uh, écouter tous ces résumés parce que c'est impossible pour chacun de nous d'être présent à toutes ces sessions. Donc, uh, ces résumés, honnêtement, m'ont vraiment aidé comme vraiment me rattraper et à savoir ce qui s'est passé. Donc, je suis vraiment reconnaissant de ce travail-là. Encore, uh, merci à Jake et son équipe. Vous faites du travail formidable et merci beaucoup d'être là. Um, so, in a couple of minutes, we're going to be taking a short break as Jake mentioned and we'll be back uh, and we'll start our second round of a breakout session at 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time uh, but before we go into that uh, I'm going to uh, take a few minutes again to just kind of go over uh, some of our housekeeping items. Uh, I know some of you have heard this over and over again uh, during the past couple of days but it's really really important that uh, we, keep talk we keep mentioning these things because uh, they basically make, uh, make up what we want to get on some to be. Uh, so you're on mute uh, unless you're in a coffee connection session, which are the small, uh, the, the group chats uh, that you can uh, get into uh, after the after each breakout sessions. Uh, for any of the plenaries, uh, green parties, uh, or breakout sessions, you also be on mute, but you have access uh, to the Q&A and the live chat function. Uh, use Those sessions are always recorded, and uh, feel free to use these uh, tools to interact uh, with other, uh, with the panelists and other members of the audience as well. Um, organizers can also always be identified by the word organizer uh, beside uh, the Zoom chat Zoom chat name uh, together on some has a code of conduct. If you haven't looked it up yet, please uh, uh, go on the website and check it out. I'll also link it in the chat right after. Um, if you're experiencing, if experiencing any issues or you notice someone someone else that is being harassed or have any other concerns really, uh, please feel, feel free to contact one of the member of the organize, of the Together on some organizing team. Uh, you can do that through email at, uh, by emailing if info at uh, info that uh, together on some at gmail.com uh, make sure you mention the uh, subject line to be uh, urgent code, code of conduct so that you know we can get back to those as quickly as, pos as possible uh, together on some has uh, si vous, si vous êtes victime d'harcèlement euh, ou remarquez que quelqu'un d'autre euh, se fait harceler, euh, si, ou bien si vous avez euh, d'autres préoccupations, s'il vous plaît, euh, contactez, contactez l'équipe organisatrice de, de Together Ensemble. Euh, vous pouvez les contacter à travers leur courriel à info point together uh, at info point together on some arrobas uh, gmail uh, gmail dot com point com uh, et mentionné uh, dans le sujet de la ligne dans le, la ligne d'objet uh, urgent code de conduite pour que l'on puisse uh, 
uh, repong et uh, vous assister au plus vite possible. Um, there's also, as you probably noticed by now, there's an alternate audio track uh, where you can access uh, interpreted versions of the main language. Uh, so mo most of the contents, if not all of the content, is available in both French and English. Uh, we are simplifying the coffee chats. Uh, we had some issues. Uh, there were some uh, issues that we encountered yesterday. So uh, to make it easier, uh, there's only going to be one block of coffee chat that you can join. And you can join these uh, after uh, business basically uh, the main 45 minutes. And so those coffee chat sessions will be over, um, will basically be overlapping with the, um, the new one hour session. So uh, yeah, make sure if you want to connect with other people from, uh, with other members of the audience or the participants, you can definitely head out to those coffee chats to do so. Uh, again, there's always a lot of amazing choices in programming, uh, but do not worry about missing out. Don't worry about the FOMO. Uh, all of these chats will be available on, on the Together on some YouTube channel uh, right after the event. Uh, we'll try to post them as quickly as possible as we are uh, navigating uh, this uh, the e-conference. Uh, at the end of each day, you also receive a daily digest newsletter from our partners at Future of Good. Um, I received the, uh, the one yesterday and Honestly, it was, it was amazing. It was, I really liked it. Uh, just not only it looked really good, but also it went over like some of the main quotes uh, that some of the speakers, uh, the panelists mentioned that were really, really important. And he also explained uh, some of the uh, key concepts that were like uh, touched on yesterday. And so I used that to really catch up on like some of the stuff that I missed. And I think those were really great. So thanks again to Future of Good for that. Uh, our goal is to make the, our goal at Together is to make the program, the programming as easy for you as possible. Uh, all the links are in the schedule. So uh, when you head to the website, all of the links uh, should be, uh, when you click on the, on each session, the link should be there. So we ask again to not share the link with anyone else. Uh, everyone that register uh, through Eventbrite or other means got the same link. Um, and yeah, so, Again, if something goes wrong, uh, you know, this is an e-conference. This is the first time for a lot of us doing this. Uh, so if something goes wrong, uh, you know, please give us time uh, to basically to do a follow-up. Uh, let us know that something is wrong and we'll try to uh, fix those issues as soon as possible. Uh, if, uh, if something goes wrong during the session and we can fix it, we'll redirect you to another uh, session. Um, and yeah, uh, last but not least, uh, the spirit of Together Ensemble, again, uh, is of co one of cooperation and mutual respect. Uh, the commitment to leave no one behind has been described as one of the foundation, uh, as the foundation, the, under the underlying moral code by the uh, UN Deputy Secretary Jan, Jan Helasio. And we really want to make sure that uh, this commitment, uh, this foundation is part of, uh, of the conference throughout the time. So feel free to let us know where we're failing, where we're succeeding, and we welcome all suggestions and feedback. Uh, and uh, as you engage in conversation, again, remember that we all come from different places, different religion, religion and so misunderstandings are going to happen uh, because we don't always all speak the same mother tongue. Uh, so again, make sure you always ask for clarification first, and we always recommend being tough and being firm on issues, but be soft on people. Uh, we always want to be kind to each other. And last, really last and not least, uh, make sure you use the hashtag together on some 2020 uh, on social media uh, a, a, um, and make sure uh, so Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, whichever platform you're using. And yeah, thanks a lot, everyone. And I'm going to take a back seat uh, now and we'll see you again at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Day Latina time to uh, kickstart the session. And thanks and have a good time. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, contact us at info.togetherensemble.gmail.com info.togetherensemble at arrobasgmail.com uh, Merci et uh, bonne pause. Allez, avez tous une bonne, une bonne pause, une bonne break.